the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Salad dressing headquarters has news for you. Kraft, makers of Miracle Whip salad dressing, has created a lighter bodied oil for your own homemade salad dressing. Kraft oil is different from other salad and cooking oils you can buy. Kraft oil has a lighter body. It blends faster and better with other ingredients. Get a bottle of lighter bodied Kraft oil tomorrow. It's the most wonderful oil ever created for salad dressing, fine baking, and for frying. Well, there was quite a bit of excitement around the great Gildersleeve's house a few days ago when a telegram arrived from Canada. You know how it is when a telegram arrives. Hurry up and open it, Aunt. Uh, I'm trying to, Leroy. Get your thumb out of the envelope. Who's it from, Miss Gildersleeve? Now, let's see. Well, from Cousin Bert, way up in Canada. Can you read it, Uncle, or is it written in Canadian? <laughs> yeah, oh, you know Canadians speak English the same as we do. Only kidding. What does Cousin Bert say? Yeah, he says, I'm sending you a little surprise from the Great Dominion of Canada. Regards, Bert. Ain't that nice? Gosh, where do you suppose it is? You haven't any idea. Cousin Bert has done awfully well in Canada. Yeah? He started out as a trapper, then he found some gold... And then he went into timber. Why did he go into the timber? The mounted police after him? <laughs> okay. They found a lot of oil up there lately. Hey, maybe he's selling you an oil well. Could be some oil stock. Why, George, Bertie? Yes, sir. Let's get Cousin Bert's picture out of the attic and put it on the piano. Yes, sir. <laughs> cousin Bert was always my favorite cousin. Is that why you had his picture in the attic? <laughs> Leroy, let's not deride Bert. He's sending something. Yeah, there's a smart cookie. He knew they'd discover oil there. He knew Canada was the land of opportunity. Maybe he's just sending you an opportunity. <laughs> what? To buy some oil stock. Oh. Uh, Mr. Gilsey, you still want me to get the picture or wait and see what you get? You find the picture, Bertie. Yes. Yeah. No matter what Bert sends me, oil, furs, wheat land, he's still my favorite cousin. A courageous pioneer. A business tycoon. And a distinguished gentleman. Oh, brother, all the oil isn't in Canada. <laughs> I think I'll stop in Peavy's and tell him my good fortune. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Peavy, did you ever receive a bona fide wire from Canada? No, but once I received some chicken wire from Kenosha. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm talking about a telegram from Canada. No, Mr. Gillersleeve, I don't recall getting a telegram from up that way. Well, I guess that's because you don't have rich relatives up there. If I had rich relatives up there, I'm the one who'd be sending the telegram. <laughs> Yeah, I have one here from my cousin Bert, Peavy. You don't say. I have a cousin in Peoria, but he never sent me a telegram. Would you care to hear what he says? He did write a postscript on his Christmas card this year. He's sending me a surprise from Canada. It said Happy New Year. <laughs> Who said Happy New Year? Cousin Ruther. Peavy, we're talking about my cousin Bert. Well, you talk about your cousin, I'll talk about mine. <laughs> Stevie, are you interested in what I'm about to get? Oh, yes. Yeah. What is it? I don't know. How is that? <laughs> it's going to be a big surprise. We've been speculating about it at home. Personally, I think it has something to do with the big oil discoveries up there. My, my. Leroy. Well, hello, Leroy. Hi, Mr. Peavy. Oh, guess what? What? The man from the express office called. He did? Cousin Bert's present is here. What is it? Oh, boy, this is the best thing that ever happened. Boy, what a present. All right, what is it? Better than an oil well. Better than an oil well? You don't change. Better than anything. Oh, boy. Leroy, what is it? It's a dog. <laughs> a dog? Yeah, the man said, come down and pick up your pup. 
What do you think of that, Mr. Peavy? <laughs> you better ask your uncle what he thinks of it. <laughs> well, I'm a little surprised. Oh, boy, guess what I've been wanting a puppy. Uh, Leroy, did the express man say that's all there was for us? Don't worry, Mr. Gildersleeve. The puppy may be holding some oil stock in his mouth. <laughs> Leroy, you can't miss school. I wouldn't miss it a bit. <laughs> can I go get the puppy? You can go get him after school. The express office will take care of it. Uh, do you have any wooden crates out back, Mr. Peavy? I want to build a house for the dog. I think so. Leroy, we can see about that later. Now run for school or you'll be late. Okay. Oh, boy, a puppy. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll give you the crates if you're going to build a dog house for your pup. Peavy, I'd like to build a dog house for Cousin Bert. Well, I've got a lot of work to do today. I guess I'll start by clearing the desk. Yeah, I could go down to the express office and get the puppy. No, Leroy wants to do that. He certainly is excited about it now. But I know how long that'll last. After a couple of weeks, I'm the guy who'll have to take care of him. Oh, well, if it doesn't work out, I'll just send a telegram to Canada and surprise Cousin Bert. Wonder who's at the door. You. Sounds like Leroy. Stop, Martin. Are you in there? Leroy! Come in. What a nice surprise. I didn't expect to see you at the water department. Hey, won't you sit down, Leela? Thank you. I can't stay but a minute. You're delighted to have you drop in, even for a minute. Well, I'm just here on a little business. Oh? Throckmorton, I got my first water bill, and it's so high, I'm sure there's a mistake someplace. Well, we can look into it. I know you can find it. You have such a head for figures. Uh, thank you. You have the bill with you? Here it is. Isn't that an outlandish amount? But, Leela, we've raised the rate since you left town. Why? Well, everybody else was doing it. Well, you'll just have to explain to Leela what all those figures mean. Oh, gracious, I have such a time with my finances. <laughs> you don't mind if I depend on you, do you, Throckmorton? Oh, no. But everything on your bill seems to be in order, Leela. It just looks puzzling. Well, maybe if I come over and sit on the arm of your chair, you can explain it to me. <laughs> There's not much to explain, really. Now, this is something. Am I in your way? Oh, no. <laughs> You're not in my way. Now, what happened to the water bill? There it is, right in front of you. Oh, yes. Yeah, let's see. This is our standard rate. Rock Martin, I've never seen your profile from this angle. And, uh, uh, this is your meter reading. I declare you get handsomer every year. No, Leela. You have the cutest little kill right there. <laughs> I'm finding it difficult to figure out this bill. Well, then you know what I'm up against. Uh, what do you think the amount should be, Throckmorton? Well, the amount does look a little blurred. Let's just cut it in half. Oh, thank you, Throckmorton. I really appreciate it. But, of course, I didn't want to influence you. Well, there's no reason why the commissioner and the customer can't sit down and Talk these things over. Oh, gracious, I've taken up enough of your valuable time. No hurry, Leela. Keep your seat. We could recheck the water bill. Oh, no, I'm satisfied now. Uh, how are Bertie and Leroy? Well, Leroy is all excited because we have a puppy coming to the house. A puppy? Yeah, Cousin Bert from Canada sent it to me. Aren't you lucky? Well... Oh, I can just see Leroy with a puppy. There's nothing like a boy growing up with a dog. 
Who? I just adore puppies. You do? And you must be terribly excited about it, Throckmorton. Well, in a way. <laughs> My father always thought dogs were too much trouble, but he was a stern man where you are gentle and compassionate. Well, I try to be. <laughs> Throckmorton, I'll have to come over to your house and see that puppy. You know, any time, Leela. And if you can't, I'll bring him over to see you. Good. Since we're both so fond of dogs, why not I bring him over tonight? <laughs> Rock Martin, you're just trying to rush me into a date, you schemer, you. You bet. <laughs> Is that you hammering away? Yep. I'm building a little house for the puppy. I'm going to surprise Leroy. Yes, sir. I thought you wasn't too keen about getting that puppy. Well, on the contrary. I can't wait for Leroy to bring him home. Yes, sir. In fact, I plan to take him over to Mrs. Ransom's tonight. Yes, sir. She's extremely fond of dogs, I just found out. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, Freddy, where are you? Down here, Leroy. Oh, no. Let's go see that puppy. All right, we're coming up, Leroy. Hurry up, he's even better than I expected. Where is he, Leroy? Well, come on, I got him tied to the banister. Leroy, that's no way to treat a little puppy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a puppy? Leroy, he looks more like a horse. He's a great dame. The express man said he weighed 140 pounds. Zeke. <laughs> come on, boy, say hello to Uncle Bertie. <laughs> You know, he's young. He's very friendly. He's wagging his tail. He's going to knock down the newel post. Come on, Bertie. Pat on the head. Has he been fed? Sure. What do you think of him, Monk? Well, I didn't object to a puppy, but I wasn't prepared for anything like this. I'll take off the leash and let him get used to the house. You... Steady, boy. You think he should be loose in the parlor? Oh, I'm sure he's going to live with us. Look around, boys. Wow. Look at them feet spin. That goes my floor. Leroy, I don't know if we can keep an animal this big. What? Mr. Gilsey, look at him right up and put his paws on the mantle. Over. He's just curious. Pooch, watch that clock. There it goes. Oh, my goodness. Leroy, catch that dog. Okay, here, boy. Nice on the coffee table. Dog, get out of my cigar. Back on the next tray. I heard him out the back door. Leroy, put the leash on him. Well, put it on outside, huh? If you can catch him. Stop him, Leroy. He's chasing the neighbor's chickens. Here, boy. Here, boy. Here, boy. Why, George, that dog has to go. He's already gone. Over the fence. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Did you ever serve waffles for dessert at your house? The Kraft Kitchen suggests you try it soon. They're not ordinary waffles, of course. They're fudge waffles, rich with fudgy flavor and extra crisp and light because they're made with lighter-bodied Kraft Oil. Kraft Oil is the new liquid shortening that is superfined by an exclusive Kraft process. Its lighter body blends faster and better with the other ingredients any recipe calls for. Fudge waffles are easy to make when you use better blending Kraft Oil. Just sift together one and one-half cups of flour... Two teaspoons baking powder, one half teaspoon salt, one cup sugar, and one half cup cocoa. Then to two beaten egg yolks, add three fourths cup milk and one half cup of craft oil. Pour this liquid mixture into the flour mixture. Add one half cup chopped almonds, one teaspoon vanilla, and blend well. Then fold in two stiffly beaten egg whites. Bake in a hot waffle baker and your fudge waffles are ready to serve. Believe me, they'll taste as luscious as they smell. Drop a postcard to Kraft Kitchens for this unusual Kraft oil recipe. 
The address is Kraft Foods Company, Chicago 90, Illinois. Kraft Kitchens, Kraft Foods Company, Chicago 90, Illinois. And tomorrow, get a bottle of Kraft Oil, the most wonderful oil ever created for baking, frying, and salad dressings. Lighter-bodied Kraft Oil. Well, the great Gildersleeve was pretty well adjusted to having a puppy in the house, but when Leroy came home with a 140-pound Great Dane, the water commissioner erupted like a broken water main. Leroy, I won't have it. Why not? I'm sorry, but we can't keep it. I won't have that horse making a racetrack out of my parlor, <laughs> hurdling the coffee table, scratching the finish with the big paws. Yeah, but... And look what he's done to Bertie's hardwood floor. Oh, okay, when he's in the parlor, I'll put my boxing gloves on him. <laughs> <laughs> you will not. He might hit somebody and hurt him. Oh, gosh. The way he rears up and stands on his hind legs, you'd think he's part kangaroo. Well, we can train him, Monk. He already knows how to do a lot of things. Like what? Well, uh, I gave him a pound of hamburger and, and said, eat it, and he ate it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, that's another thing, Leroy. That behemoth will eat us out of house and home. We'll put him on a diet or something. Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Gillespie. Yes, Bertie. The man next door said to ask you if you'd like to come over and help get his chickens out of the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Seems there's a few on the roof, too. Yeah. You see, Leroy, that dog is disrupting the whole neighborhood. Not anymore. I got him in the garage. Where'll I put the car? Well, when you put the car in the garage, I'll put the dog in the basement. Oh, for Leroy, you can't keep that big dog in the basement. He needs a place to run. I'm all for giving him a road map and letting him run back to Canada. <laughs> back to Canada? But, Uncle, what would Cousin Bert say? Well, I didn't really mean he should go back to Canada, my boy, but we do have to find another home for him. He's just too much dog for us. But, Uncle... Don't you agree, Bertie? Bertie? Mr. Gillsleeve, I ain't gonna say nothing against no dog. But... That man's best friends, and I don't talk about my friends. <laughs> That's right, Bertie. But you can see what a problem he's been already. Can't you, Leroy? Leroy, answer me. Mm, I guess so. I'll tell you what I'll do. Yeah? You find a good home for the Great Dane, and we'll get a small dog. A very small dog. What do you think of that? You don't think I'm being unreasonable, do you? After all, he's my dog, you know. Leroy, won't you do this for your old uncle? Leroy. Come on, boy. We'll find a home for you yet. <laughs> Anybody. I'm going to be pretty particular about who gets you. Getting hungry, boy? Let's stop in here, Mr. Peavy, and I'll buy you a sandwich. Hello, oh, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Leroy. Oh, what have we here? Do you mind if I bring him in the store? Well, the sign says no dogs, but I don't see why you can't bring in an elephant. <laughs> wasn't so big, then we could keep him. You're not going to keep him, Leroy? No, I have to find a home for him. Oh, that's too bad. Mr. Peavy, I want to buy him a sandwich. Let me see how much money I got. Well, why don't I just put a few meat scraps in his sack? No charge. Well, that'll be keen, Mr. Peavy. Would you like a little ham and beef, doggy? Oh! <laughs> He'd eat anything. Well, I'll toss in a couple of meatballs. They haven't been moving. <laughs> I guess he's pretty hungry. Mr. Peavy, you know where I can find a good home for him? Well, Leroy, I wouldn't mind having a fine dog like your great Dane. You wouldn't? I've always been a little partial to the breed. Well, it's a good breed, but you wouldn't want this dog. I wouldn't? No, nothing but trouble. Well, he looks like an intelligent dog. No, he's a real stoop. Uh, hasn't he been trained? Oh, he knows how to do a couple of things, like playing football. He plays football? He's the only dog in town that can carry one in his mouth. 
But you wouldn't want him just for that. Well, I imagine he has a lot of good qualities. Seems to have a fine coat. I guess so, considering how much he sheds around the house. Mrs. Beebe wouldn't like that. Leroy? Yeah? You came in here to give away your dog, and I'm going to make you very happy. Yeah? I'm not going to take him. Oh, boy! <laughs> I couldn't get home for dinner, Bertie, but things piled up at the office. Yes, sir. So I caught a bite downtown. Yes, sir. Where's Leroy? Leroy's gone to bed. Oh? That poor little boy. Gave the dog away, did he? Mr. Gilsey, you have to talk to Leroy about that dog. That poor little boy. No, Bertie. And he's gone up to bed. That poor little boy. Well, I think I'll go and see if he's asleep. I'd like to find out what he did with the dog. I don't like to be so firm about this. But he's just too much dog. We don't have room for him. Leroy. Yeah, poor kid. Probably cried himself to sleep. Yeah, I better go in and check. What's that? Leroy never snored before? Yeah, maybe it's because his head's under the covers. I'd better turn the blanket back. That isn't Leroy snoring. Zeke, he's got that dog under the bed. Dog, get out of Leroy's room. Go on, go on down to the kitchen. By George, this isn't going to happen again. Imagine sleeping with a great thing. First thing I know, that dog will be taking over my room. Here, uh, I think I'll glance at the paper and... Go to bed. Where is the paper? Suppose the darn dog tore it up. Well, here it is in my chair. Headlines are about the same as this morning. What's that? Oh, dog. I've got a good notion to... Oop. He's got my slippers in his mouth. Say... He's bringing them to me. Well, thank you. Did Cousin Bert teach you to bring slippers? <laughs> oh, come on. It wasn't that much work. Now, oh, now you want to lie down against my leg. Huh? Well, you can stay there for a while. Look at that tail go. It doesn't take much to make you happy, does it? You're not a bad... Mr. Gilsey. Oop, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, could it be that you're smiling at that dog? Me? Bertie, I was reading the comics. <laughs> yes, sir. And I thought, sure, I saw you patting him on the head. Well, just trying to keep this pushy dog out of my lap. <laughs> yes, sir. And I know I saw him come downstairs with your slippers. It's nothing more than I do for myself. I'm not giving him any credit for that. No, sir. <laughs> hey, Bertie. Good morning, Leroy. Have you seen the dog? Not this morning. Oh, when I woke up, he was coming out of my room. He was? Where's Unc? He's in the parlor, I think. <laughs> Leroy, I got something to tell you about your uncle. Yeah? Last night, you know what that dog did? What? He brought your uncle his house slippers, and you should have seen that man Dean. Yeah? And I caught Mr. Gilkey patting him on the head. You did? <laughs> of course, he wouldn't admit it, but I think that dog's winning him over. Oh, boy, that's just the break I need to get to keep the dog. What you mean? Well, now I can make another showdown. Yes, my boy? Do you mind if I skip breakfast this morning? Well, aren't you hungry? Well, sure I'm hungry, but I want to get out and get rid of a dog. Oh? I've changed my mind since I know you don't like him. I'll, I'll get rid of him in a hurry. Well... I'll just give him to the first guy I meet on the street. Leroy, don't you think the dog deserves a little more consideration than that? No, nah, he's just a dog. There are a million of them. I see. Maybe my breakfast won't even get cold. I'll get rid of him so fast. Nobody wants him, I'll take him to the edge of town and tell him to hit the road. He's a grown dog. Let him find his own home. Yeah, Leroy, you're not fooling anybody. 
I'm not. You don't want to give the dog away. The heck I don't. Where is he? Where's his leash? I never want to see him again. Well, you convinced me. I have? You, <laughs> you make me feel better about what I did this morning. What did you do? Well, I didn't think you were going to do anything about it. So I got up early and found a home for him myself. What? Now, don't worry, my boy. He'll be well taken care of. Not that it means anything to you. Well, gosh, who'd you give him to? Well, I... Hey, he's in the closet! Yeah. I thought you found a home for him! Yeah, I did, my boy, right here with us. Oh, boy, you're swell, huh? <laughs> Come on out, boy! Hey, hey, get down. Stop licking my face. Yeah, he's glad to see you, Lee, right? Yeah. Yes? You aren't kidding. We can't keep him, can we? Well, last night I decided we'd better. In fact, I even let him sleep in that big clothes closet. Yeah? He's a fine dog. Are you sure you wouldn't give him up? Positive, my boy. Why? Look what I found in the closet. Yeah, what is it? It's what used to be your new hat. See? <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be right back. You'll make a grand discovery when you begin using craft oil in your French dressing recipes and in all your baking recipes that call for liquid shortening. Craft oil is the world's only super-fined oil. Its lighter body blends faster and better with other ingredients. You're sure of perfect results every time. Millions agree the most wonderful oil ever created for salad dressings, baking, and frying comes from salad dressing headquarters. It's craft oil. Get a bottle tomorrow. Folks, this is the great Gildersleeve again. I'd like to recommend buying United States defense bonds because it's a practical way of serving in the defense effort as well as ensuring our financial security. Defense bonds yield more interest now, making them an even better buy. And there's nothing safer. You can buy them on the payroll savings plan where you work, or you can pick them up at any bank or post office. All right, George, I think I'll get on and buy one right now. Leroy! Yeah? Where's my hat? Our dog chewed it, remember? Well, I'm going to buy a bond if I have to go bareheaded. Good night, folks. <laughs> Steve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White on his friend's side. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Shirley Mitchell, Pedro Kalvig, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Delicious cold cuts for luncheon or supper make a welcome change of pace from the hot meals you've been serving. Easy to fix, too. But here's a tip. Be sure there's delicious craft prepared mustard on the table. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of craft mustard. Mild craft mustard, so smooth and delicately spiced. And craft mustard with snappy horseradish added to give it extra zip. Keep both kinds on hand for different tastes. Next time, get Kraft Prepared Mustard. Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC.